This lesson is about locking. The concept is simple. You want to lock the portion of the database that you're going to be using so no other user can update it while you're working with it. Locking is not something that your JDBC can do for you. It's strictly up to the database. And as you would suspect, different databases do locking in different ways. So if you have a multi-user system, you'll need to check with the locking capabilities and policies of the database that you're using. Now, here are some ways it works. You can retrieve data by using the select statement with a for update option. This returns the data to you and locks that part of the database so it cannot be changed. It will stay that way until you commit or roll back. That way, if you decide to update the data, you should have no collisions with other users. Once you commit the updates, the locks are then released. Think of an airplane reservation system. You select a seat for update. You look at the name assigned to it. If there's a name already there, you roll back and try again. If there is no name there, you can put one there and then commit. But you need to make sure your database works this way. There are common terms used to describe things as defined in SQL 92. A dirty read means that any pending changes in a transaction in one process will show up in the reads, the selects, of another process whether or not they have been committed. A non-repeatable read means that updates from one process are visible to another process the moment they are committed. That means that multiple queries of the same data items could possibly retrieve different data, even if they're done within the same transaction. A phantom read has to do with inserts rather than updates. Inserts made by one transaction become available after they are committed. You can determine the level allowed by your read by calling the method setTransactionIsolation of the connection object before you begin your transaction. This is read uncommitted, the lowest and simplest level of reading. It reads everything, including uncommitted updates and inserts. It allows dirty reads, non-repeatable reads, and phantom reads. The read committed setting prevents dirty reads but non-repeatable reads and phantom reads are allowed. The repeatable reads setting means that dirty reads and non-repeatable reads are prevented, but phantom reads can occur. This is the highest level of isolation. It prevents all three, dirty reads, non-repeatable reads, and phantom reads. By setting the translation isolation, then selecting for update, you can have your locking work in a number of ways. The two main styles are called optimistic and pessimistic. In optimistic locking, you assume that there is a low chance of another process grabbing something from underneath you. But it can and does happen. Say you decide on a domain name that you want to buy, and you go to the Internet and check its availability. It turns up as being available, so you decide to grab it. However, Someone else has had the same idea, and after you look at it, but before you get it, the other party gets it. Your update then fails. In pessimistic locking, you assume that it's possible that another party could update the data after you read. Now, at first, it sounds like pessimistic would be best, but it has its drawbacks, too. In the domain name scenario, you could check for the availability of your desired domain name, and it would either show up as taken or pending, and you would have to wait until later to try again. Looking at this from the viewpoint of the seller of domain names, if the first party decided not to take it, and you never came back to try again, a sale would be lost. Which one you use and just how you use it depends entirely on the situation. Now let me say again, check your database documentation to see exactly how it works.